fish to air to meaty meat, fish to air to speedy seat. Why do I sound like the Swedish chef? Because today on Man Cave Munchies, I'm going to teach you how to make Swedish meatballs. You know, the funny thing is they're not really Swedish. They're sweet-ish because of the sweet ingredients, which in this case, we're looking at doing raspberry jam, a little bit of ground cinnamon, and nutmeg. And then over here, you've got your meat. I'm using a couple of pounds of ground round. I've got some breadcrumbs. I've got some onions two eggs, two-thirds of a cup of milk, of course a stick of butter, which you'll figure out very quickly what we're going to be doing with that, and last but not least, we're going to use some Cabernet in this puppy. So stand by and I'll teach you how to pull together this crowd-pleasing favorite. To get started, we're going to take a little bit of butter, about a tablespoon. We're going to put it in a pan over a medium heat. We just want to get that to melt a bit. We're going to be using a lot more butter in a little bit, but right now this will do. And into the butter, we're going to pour our onions. I cut up a whole onion to small the dahlia, which is even sweeter. Sweet onions are better than other ones for this particular dish. We put those in there and we'll start sweating them down. You know, we don't want to cook them hard, so I'm going to turn down the stove just a bit here. I think you got to cook them for maybe, I don't know, three, four minutes. Well, that should about do it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to introduce you to the Mighty Bowl, in which we are going to pour the onions. And then we're going to let that sit for about mm, five minutes just to let them cool off. Be right back. All right, I think it's cooled down enough. So now into the mighty bowl, you're going to add meat. In this case, it's just, like I said, a couple of pounds of ground round. But you can use a mixture of pork and beef, sausage and beef, whatever you like. I just usually like to keep it pretty simple. Then onto that, you're going to pour some breadcrumbs. This will help us keep the dish nice and moist. I'm going to crack not one but two eggs into the mix. Into that I'm going to give it just a little dash of cinnamon. I'm going to give it several dashes of nutmeg. I'm going to use some lemon pepper. And a little bit of salt. In this case, Himalayan salt, which is the one that I prefer. Then we're going to get in there and make mud pies. This is always my favorite part. I'm going to mix this stuff up to get all the breadcrumbs and the onions and all the seasonings in there. Depending on how the mix smells when I'm done, I may or may not decide to adjust it, which means adding even some more stuff. Uh, as for the other ingredients, you'll have to wait because that's going to be used in, in the secret sauce, which is also a very important part of the process of making Swedish meatballs. Anyway. Enough that. Alrighty then. And when you get done, what you're going to end up with is one giant Zvita's meatball, right? Wrong. 
We're going to leave it like this for approximately one hour. I'm going to put some plastic wrap over it, put it in the fridge so that we can let all the bread and all the seasonings and everything else reconstitute in there. And then we're going to get to the next phase, so stand by. All right, we're back. Now it's time to start making meatballs. And what I'm going to do, I like to make them fairly small. So, you know, about an inch, because the more the smaller you make them, the tastier they are, the more the sauce will coat them, and the better they'll taste when you actually get finished with them. So what we're going to do is we're going to make all this meat is going to turn into meatballs. So watch this. While I'm doing this, I'm turning on my stove so that we'll be ready to start cooking these bad boys in a few minutes. All right. And then I'll start putting the last few right in the pan. And you know, you probably do this in a couple of ways, but it's worth it because you don't want to break up your meatballs. So we're taking those up here. Yeah, it'd probably be about two ways in this pan. Give yourself a little bit of room to work because again, when you turn them, it's going to be a little delicate at first until they start to cook up a bit. You don't want to Smash your balls, boys. You know you hate that. Okay, and let's carefully turn the meatballs over. There you go. See, they're starting to brown. Now you know why you want to leave a little bit of room to work. You'll need to turn them two or three times to get them all nice and brown and then put them back in the bowl and I'll show you what to do next. All right, boys, what you got here is your basic bowl of ball. What we're going to do with them next is we're going to move them from the bowl to the crock pot. So stand by. If you don't have a crock pot, you can always put them into a regular pot. What we're going to do next is we're going to be making our gravy. Speaking of which, you want to get up all the juices into the pot. But what you don't want to worry about is whether or not the meatballs are completely cooked on the inside because guess what? We're not done cooking yet. All right, let's move back over to the kitchen. I tell you, it's hard to work in this town. All right, if you'll notice, there's some ooey gooey stuff there and I have taken some of the oils out of there, but I'm, I'm leaving a little bit down there because we're going to make gravy and you want to have some of the, the good, the good nasty stuff for the gravy. I'm actually going to add some more because I'm going to put, put at least three more tablespoons of butter into this. And you'll find out why in a minute because again, we're going to make what's called a classic roux. And what a roux is, is basically just butter, flour, and we're going to put in some milk, and in this case, we're leaving the drippings from the pan. So let's stir that around, get that good melted down, scrape off some of the stuff that's on the bottom of the pan. In fact, I'm even going to toss in just a little bit of wine to help deglaze that puppy. That won't hurt the roux. We're actually going to pour a little bit of one more wine in there later. Let's get this going. Because the thing is, if you just try to make gravy with water, 
what will happen is the uh, flour is going to clump. Okay, but what we're going to do is we're going to put in some flour. And again, you want to do this a little, you know, easy does it, boys. A little bit at a time. And the trick is to get as much into there as you can without creating speckle. So, a little here, a little there. In fact, if you want, you can even add, if you need to, you can add a little more of the butter, which I think I will do just to help out a little bit. Again, we're going to make a nice little pot of the Swedish gravy. There we go. This is going to be our thickener. Okay. And then we're going to take our cup of milk like so. And we're going to pour it, hopefully, into the pot. We're going to give that a little stir. And even though it looks a little glumpy and lumpy right now, once it starts to cook down a little bit, it'll all smoothen out. You'll see. It will smooth out just like silk. Once it starts comes a bubble, it'll actually thicken up. But we're not worried about that right now. We just want to get the gravy going. And you can see it's a little bit brown because guess what? We have some of the meat drippings in there. Now for the secret ingredient, which I'm going to use raspberry jam, but you can use grape jam. Pretty much any sweet jam. You want to give it about a tablespoon. I know that sounds crazy to put it in gravy, but trust me, once it cooks down with the rest of the meat, all day long, it's going to be just phenomenal. Like I said, that's the, the secret ingredient. And now, what happens if we uh, bring this thing up to a bubble and it doesn't quite get all the lumps out? Well, that's what we have Mr. Blender for. And in a pinch, I will call him in, but I'm not ready to go there yet. And also, what happens if it just gets too thick or it's too much like speck? So we add more milk? No, and then we're going to add us a little bit of wine. As you can see, this is making a nice amount. And again, it's going to be enough to be able to coat the meatballs, the bucket home meatballs we have in our crock pot. And again, you can cook it in a regular pot if you want, but I like to let it cook for, you know, at least a few hours because that's going to be good for the meat. And it's going to be good for the gravy because they'll both make nice with each other. Whereas a buddy of mine likes to say, the longer it sits, the better it gets. There you go. You can see it's starting to smooth out already. And don't worry if there's a few little speckles in there. That's just part of the good stuff from the meat. Always make sure you get the edges of your pan. But as you can see, it's already starting to thicken up nicely. To the point where I'm going to give it just a little splash of wine. You can see now's the time to add the wine. Why not, right? Why not? All right. Add just a little bit more of my sweetener. Or should I say my Zedener? Maybe give it a little dash of salt. Maybe give it a little tiny hit of the nutmeg like we did in the other one. And even just a little pinch, and I mean a pinch, of cinnamon because you'll find I use cinnamon in all kinds of things because it's not, it doesn't always come out cinnamony but it's, it's like a, a flavor enhancer just a little splash for our friend Mr. Wine it's not quite come to a bubble yet but we've got gravy Plenty of it. You know, again, you don't want to make soup. You're not, you're not making a big pot of soup. It's not meatball soup, boys. Yep. That's about what I want. Anyway, we're almost there, and then we will go pour this over our meatballs, and then all we got to do is let it sit there for a while. You'll notice it's a little, it's a little brown, a little red at the same time. Mm. Yep, there we go. 
it's just about got it. And as you can see, it's just starting to bubble, so that's when we turn the stove off. Let's go back over to Mr. Crockpot. What you want to do is you want to get you want to coat the meatballs. So make sure you pour it on them, all over them. Get all of them. Even the ones in the back. Even the ones in the front. So I use a spatula so I can get up all oh, the good gravy. Alrighty. And all we have to do is put the lid on and wait a few hours. Alright, it's time to plate these puppies. I'm going to use a little Spessley's, which is the quickest, easiest pasta in the world, which I've shown you already how to make in my series. Get some gravy, get some Amita balls, there you have it. Now it's time to bring on the Swedish bikini team.